This is how characters age in games, and this is how I'd prefer it to be. Today, we're going to create characters that age continuously, from child all the way to elder. And we're not stopping there. We'll add a slider for gender, various body shapes, detailed face shaping, physics simulation for hair and body, and even facial animation with motion capture. I spent more than three months researching techniques for this editor, and later, it might even come handy in one of my other projects. Mm -hmm. For the base character mesh and clothes, I use Dust Studio, a versatile modular character creator with a ton of resources. I created the character and added some clothing. For this setup, I used a few casual Dust outfits along with some marketplace morph packs for aging. Then I set up an animation timeline, where each frame would later be converted into a separate morph target. I created keyframes for drawing controlled morphs for smoother deformations, facial expressions to be used with motion capture, masculine and feminine body variations, full body and face shapes for the customization in the game, jiggle physics, and of course, the aging morphs. I also adjusted the clothing with fit control morphs to prevent any overlap between the clothes. I wanted to make the character modular, as you would expect in a live simulator, but this time I wasn't using Unreal's mutable plugin, because it's broken. And apparently, it's not getting fixed anytime soon. So instead, I defined custom surfaces for the hand and feet to be able to split up the body mesh manually. Once everything was set up, it was time to export. To prepare the character for Unreal Engine, I moved on to Houdini. No, not that one. Not that one either. Uh, not even close. I mean the node-based procedural 3D software. In Houdini, I set up the skeleton, and to keep the character modular, I separated the body and clothing meshes into individual parts. I created UV layouts and packed the textures, then set up mesh occlusion, so the body mesh is removed from underneath the clothes. Finally, I've set up everything for the morph targets and pose assets to be generated based on the animation frames. At that point, it was time to bring the character into Unreal Engine. For a nice preview, I used a level from the meta human lighting environment. They come with great quality, preset lighting setups. I imported the character and clothing meshes along with their textures and set up materials for both the body and the clothes. I added wrinkle maps, created materials for the brows and lashes, and set up the eye material, adding a bit of extra shadow and blur to smooth out the corners. Then I started building the character. I defined separate skeletal mesh components for each body part and connected them using the set leader pose component function. With this setup, there's one master component, the head, and all other body parts follow its animation. Finally, in blueprints, I assigned the meshes to each component. The base character import was almost complete. There was only one part missing. To fix the bald head situation, next up was adding some hair to the character. I used hair assets from Reallusion's character creator, since Das hair is usually way too high poly, and most of the time it's trend based, and those absolutely obliterate performance. So I sent the Das mesh over to character creator and started building the hair. I used its hair builder to assemble the hairstyle from modular pieces. Then I brought the hair into Blender, matched the hair mesh to the body, transferred the morph targets from the body mesh to the hair, and rigged the ponytail for extra movement. After that, I imported the hair into Unreal Engine using Reallusion's auto setup plugin and set up its materials and a physics asset. I added another skeletal mesh component to the character for the hair and created an animation blueprint that copies the body's motion while also adds physics-based animation for the ponytail. Still, there wasn't really much motion to copy from the body mesh just yet. I wanted to set up animation before starting character customization. That way, any issue would be easier to spot once we start shaping the character. I retargeted animations from the MC Idols animation pack using an IK rig, then I set up a basic state machine to play some idle animations randomly. Besides the regular animation blueprint, I also used a post-process blueprint to drive facial morphs and join controlled morphs. Next up was configuring the camera, and I also added controls to let me rotate the character by dragging with the mouse. Then I introduced a close-up camera as well, but I had to adjust the idle animation since it kept drifting out of frame, so I reduced the idle motion for close-up shots directly in the animation blueprint. After setting everything up, there was only one thing left before actually building the editor. I wanted to give the character editor a proper environment, something that felt more like a bedroom or a wardrobe. So I used the modern house pack as a base and started removing all the unnecessary parts of the map. 
Then I improve the lighting using the Ultra Dynamic Sky plugin and fine tune the overall look. I position the character and the camera to fit the new layout and adjusted the lights illuminating the character. After that, I bake the lighting for better quality and performance. With all that in place, everything was ready. It was finally time to dive into building the editor. The core idea was to apply pose asset poses and morph targets based on animation curves. So I added a component to the character to handle those curves and implemented in the animation blueprint to drive the poses from them. To test it, I built a simple UI with sliders. Then I could see that the morphs were working, but they came with a lot of issues. I quickly added camera zoom in and out for the chart. <laughs> Happy Halloween! After fixing the headless bug, I needed to make a few adjustments because I wanted to use the very same animation for all body shapes. When the weight slider goes up, I widen the arms to prevent them from clipping into the body. I also slightly scaled down the child's hair. The next big issue was the feet sliding. To fix that, I added IK foot locking using the Dragon IK plugin. But fixing the feet made it obvious that the pelvis was moving way too much. So I ended up creating my own animation node in C++ to correct it procedurally by dampening its movement. Once that was done, the major bugs were gone, but there was still room for improvement. I extended the hair material to turn it grey for older characters and added logic to enable the physics morphs when… um… applicable. I also wasn't happy with how the aging wrinkles looked, so I went back to DAS, increased subdivision and exported a high quality mesh. Then I took the model to Substance Painter, an industry standard tool for creating textures and materials for 3D models, where I baked new normal maps for the aged morph to emphasize the wrinkles more. Then in Unreal, I added logic to dial those normals into the body material with the morph. Once that was done, the aging wrinkles were much more defined than before. I also wanted to add skin coloring, so I created a color picker UI and added a list view to manage the skin colors. Then I extended the body material to support skin colors and implemented the skin color handling logic in Angel Script. Once that was done, I could test everything, set the skin color, add custom ones, and even delete them if needed. After wrapping that up, it was time to start implementing face shaping. Before diving into it, I wanted to use MetaHuman Animator to record some facial motion capture. It's a tool that only needs an iPhone to record face performances. After the calibration take and shamelessly confronting me with my distorted facial structure, I could finally start recording an idle animation. Once that was done, I applied the recording in the animation blueprint as an additive animation. I tested it with all the body shapes, and so far, everything looked good. I added clickable spots on the head to represent different facial categories, like eyes, nose, and mouth. Then it was finally time to set up the morphs. There's something still off with the eyes. I quickly fixed the eye issue for the child, and once that was done, I had the character editor ready. That's it for today. Let me know in the comments what feature I should add next. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click hype if you're watching this in the first week. And see you in the next one.